Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. There is one body and one spirit. There is one hope in God's call to us. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God and Father of all. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, you declare your almighty power chiefly in showing mercy and pity. Grant us the fullness of your grace, that we running to obtain your promises may become partakers of your heavenly treasure. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from Jeremiah. The word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord in the 10th year of Kem Zechariah of Judah, which was the 18th year of Nebuchadnezzar. At that time, the army of the king of Babylon was besieging Jerusalem, and the prophet Jeremiah was confined in the court of the guard that was in the palace of the king of Judah, where Zechariah of Judah had confined him. Jeremiah said, the word of the Lord came to me. Hanamel, son of your uncle Shalom, is going to come to you and say, buy my field that is at Anathoth, for the right of redemption by purchase is yours. Then my cousin Hanamel came to me in the court of the guard in accordance with the word of the Lord and said to me, buy my field that is Anathoth in the land of Benjamin, for the right of possession and redemption is yours. Buy it for yourself. Then I knew that this was the word of the Lord. And I brought the bought the field at Anathos from my cousin Hanamel and weighed out the money for him, 17 shekels of silver. I signed the deed, sealed it, got witnesses, and weighed the money on scales. Then I took the sealed deed of purchase containing the terms and conditions and the open copy. And I gave the deed of purchase to Baruch, son of Neriah, son of Masiah, in the presence of my cousin Hanamel, in the presence of the witnesses who signed the deed of purchase, and in the presence of all the Judeans who were sitting in the court of the guard. In their presence, I charged Baruch, saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, take these deeds, both the seal deed of purchase and this open deed, and put them in an earthenware jar in order that they may last for a long time. For thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, houses and fields and vineyards shall again be bought in this land. The word of the Lord. Please join in reading that portion of Psalm 91 on the screen. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High abides under the shadow of the Almighty. He shall say to the Lord, You are my refuge and my stronghold, my God in whom I put my trust. He shall deliver you from the snare of the hunter and from the deadly pestilence. He shall cover you with his pinions, and you shall find refuge under his faithfulness shall be a shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of any terror by night, nor of an arrow that flies by day, of the plague that stalks in the darkness, nor of the sickness that lays waste at midday. Because he is bound to me in love, therefore will I deliver him. I will protect him because he knows my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I am with him in trouble. I will rescue him and bring him to the harm. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. A reading from Timothy. There is great gain in godliness combined with contentment. For we brought nothing into the world, so that we can take nothing out of it. 
But if we have food and clothing, we will be content with these. But those who want to be rich fall into temptation and are trapped by many senseless and harmless desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil. And in their eagerness to be rich, some have wandered away from the faith and pierced themselves with many pains. But as for you, man of God, shun all this. Pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance, gentleness. Fight the good fight of the faith. Take hold of eternal life to which you were called and for which you made the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. In the presence of God, who gives life to all things, and of Christ Jesus, who in his testimony before Pontius Pilate made the good confession, I charge you to keep the commandment without spot or blame until the manifestation of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he will bring about at the right time. He who is blessed and only sovereign, the King of kings and Lord of lords, it is he alone who has immortality and dwells in an unapproachable light, whom no one has ever seen or can see. To him be honor and eternal domination. As for those who in the present age are rich, compend them not to be haughty or to set their hopes on the uncertainty of riches, but rather on God who is richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. They are to do good, to be rich in good works, generous and ready to share, thus storing up for themselves the treasure of a good foundation for the future, so that they may take hold of the life that really is life. The word of the Lord. The Gospel of our Savior Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said to the Pharisees, There was a rich man who was dressed in purple and fine linen, and who feasted sumptuously every day. And at his gate lay a poor man named Lazarus, covered with sores, who longed to satisfy his hunger with what fell from the rich man's table. Even the dogs would come and lick his sores. The poor man died and was carried away by angels to be with Abraham. The rich man also died and was buried. In Hades, where he was being tormented, he looked up and saw Abraham far away, with Lazarus by his side. He called out, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am in agony in these flames. But Abraham said, Child, remember that during your lifetime you received your good things, and Lazarus in like manner evil things. But now he is comforted here, and you are in agony. Besides all this, between you and us, a great chasm has been fixed, so that those who might want to pass from here to you cannot do so, and no one can cross from there to us. He said, Then, Father, I beg you to send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers, that he may warn them, so that they will not also come into this place of torment. Abraham replied, They have Moses and the prophets. They should listen to them. He said, No, Father Abraham, but if someone goes to them from the dead, they will repent. 
He said to him, If they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, neither will they be convinced, even if someone rises from the dead. <clears throat> the Gospel of our Lord. Please be seated. Mother Susie and I were just remarking up here, sometimes, especially on days when um, we're doing a liturgy that's a little different, we'll sometimes have to communicate. And she leaned over to me and said, I'm just really loving hearing all of these children in here. <laughs> I am too. This week, someone made available to me uh, a video, and I was able to watch it, and it was absolutely wonderful, wonderful video. It was a video that is on, uh, had been produced by National Public Radio, and it was a video of the Fairfield Four and the McCrary sisters. Do you know who they are? They're two gospel quartets. Fairfield Four have been around for 90 years. Not the same guys. Uh, but uh, they've, they've had various people rotate through. And one of the people who was a part of the Fairfield Four and who died, his name, last name was McCrary. So the four women that are in this quartet are his daughter. And they had decided to come together and to do a gospel song together. And if you're on Facebook, you can go to my Facebook page. I've posted it there. And you can listen to it. It is an absolutely beautiful a cappella rendition of... of Rock my soul in the bosom of Abraham. Sometimes when you preach without notes, you have those uh, oops moments, and that was one of those. Rock my soul in the bosom of Abraham. I listened to it a few times, and then I listened to it a few more, and our, Nancy and I have a desk in the same area, and finally, at one point, she said, you, this, this must be for your homily. Why else would you be playing it so much? And I said, yes. But it is an absolutely beautiful, beautiful video, and the music is great. And I began to think of two different things as I listened to this. One is I began to think about the, the history and relevance of gospel music. Uh, I grew up around gospel music. Uh, mine was more the southern gospel style. But gospel music has its roots in the 17th century. You may not think it goes back that far. But it's rooted in African American spirituals. And all of these call and response songs. Oftentimes folks couldn't read. And so what they would do is they would they would write these songs and someone would sing a verse and then the congregation would sing it back. And it was a way of learning various Bible stories and learning about various things. The spirituals and gospel music got their emotional infusion during the days of slavery in this country. And many of the gospel hymns that you listen to now, you will hear the angst, the pain, the agony, the anger and frustration that comes through those hymns. Some of them, they were also kind of code hymns. Uh, some like Swing Low, Sweet Chariot may have been 
uh, songs to encourage people to leave the plantation to run away. Others may have been directions on how to get to the Underground Railroad, but at their core was the pain of a people oppressed by others. And they saw themselves as being Lazarus outside the gate of the rich man. Now that's the second I thought about as I listened to this music in this particular hymn was, you know, this is the gospel reading for this week. Thank you, God. You gave me something. So I began to think about that. And I began to think about how you and I often find ourselves as Lazarus in the story. And some of us truly are. And some of us live that out and we look for that place to go. And in this gospel hymn, the bosom of Abraham is that place. Now the bosom of Abraham is, is a term that's used throughout the Old Testament. But it's only used in one place in the New Testament. And it's in some translations of this gospel. So that Lazarus didn't just die and go away to be with Abraham. He went to the bosom of Abraham, that place of comfort and rest and protection where he was invited to go when he died. In a few minutes, Mother Susie and I, on your behalf and on behalf of the body of Christ, the whole body of Christ will baptize three people, bring them into the body. Oh, what a day it is. What a day it is. Now, I don't know about you, but I grew up with an understanding of baptism as being the redemption of Lazarus, basically. Inviting Lazarus to come into the fold so that he can be washed clean and, and made whole and new. That that was what baptism, and that is what baptism is about. And I think that that's part of what it's about. It's that act of initiation. It's that act of ceremonially washing clean and making new. But I think if we stop at that understanding, we miss something important. You see, that understanding reminds us that Lazarus needs us, that Chloe and Ava and Michael need us. And I think they do. I'm not being arrogant with that. I think they do. I think we've got something to offer. But I think that if we look at this story, it has another lesson for us. You see, we tend to think of Lazarus as being the one who was the needy person in, the, in here. But you know what? The rich man. The rich man had everything to eat, great place to live, but the ultimate act that we find in this story is that it didn't meet his need. It did not satisfy him. So I want to suggest to you that what you and I are doing here today, if we're being honest, is we're being rich men. And we're baptizing these three people not just because they need us, but because we need them. Now you can say, oh sure, we, we want our numbers to grow. Yeah. Okay, that's nice, but okay. 
Or it'd be nice, maybe they'll contribute a little more money to the... The, there were two great offenses of the rich man. One was that he didn't attend to Lazarus' needs. The second was that he allowed himself to become numb to the awareness of what was in front of him. You see, I think we need you three I think we need you to help us remain aware of the world's needs. I think we need you to bring to us a shaking of our foundation. Don't let us make you too much like us. We need you to challenge us. And to remind us and to say, look, there's Lazarus. Do something about it. I have a very simple prayer. For all of us. To close this. And it's this. Dear God, rock our souls in the bosom of Abraham. Amen. children who would like to come and witness the vet baptism to come and stand in front of the font with us here. You can see better up here. We have some coming. The candidates for holy baptism will now be presented. All together. Present Michael. Oh, 
received the sacrament of baptism. Michael, do you desire to be baptized? I do. Will you be responsible for seeing that the child you present is brought up in the Christian faith and life? Will you, by prayers and witness, help these children to grow into the full stature of Christ? I will, with God's help. Do you renounce Satan and all the spiritual forces of wickedness that rebel against God? I renounce them. Do you renounce the evil powers of this world which corrupt and destroy the creatures of God? I renounce them. Do you renounce all sinful desires that draw you from the love of God? Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as your Savior? I do. do you put your whole trust in his grace and love? I do. do you promise to follow and obey him as your Lord? I do. Will you who witness these vows do all in your power to support these persons in their life in Christ? We will. Let us join with those who are committing themselves to Christ and renew our own baptismal covenant. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to us and live again the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread, and in the prayers? I will, with God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? I will, with God's help. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will, with God's help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will, with God's help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? I will, with God's help. Let us now pray for these persons who are to receive the sacrament of new birth and for those who have renewed their commitment to Christ. Lord, hear our prayer. Open their hearts to your grace and truth. Lord, hear our prayer. Fill them with your holy and life-giving spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Keep them in the faith and communion of your holy church. Lord, hear our prayer. Teach them to love others in the power of the spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Send them into the world in witness to your love. Lord, hear our prayer. Bring them to the fullness of your peace and glory. Lord, hear our prayer. Then who do we cut strangling life when this world crucify its soul? Though it's plain to see, the world is heavenly. Be God's glow. If we try so high, let our spirits never die In my heart I feel that you are all my brothers Create a world with no fear Together we cry happy tears See the nations turn their swords to plowshares We could really get there If you cared enough for the living So make a better space
make a better place for you and for me. Make a better place for you and for me. you fed the multitudes by the lakeside by blessing the gifts of a few people. Bless these gifts to the feeding of the needy and bless us in your service who we ask it in your name. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Also Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. Glory to you forever and ever. At your command, all things came to be. The vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets in their courses, and this fragile earth, our island home. By your will, they were created and have their being. From the primal elements, you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation. But we turned against you and betrayed your trust, and we turned against one another. Have mercy, Lord, for we are sinners in your sight. Again and again, you called us to return. Through prophets and sages, you revealed your righteous law. And in the fullness of time, you sent your only son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law. To open for us the way of freedom and peace. By his will, he reconciled us. By his wounds, we are healed. And therefore, we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope to proclaim with them your glory and their unending hymn. Holy, 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 my heart, my heart adores you. My heart is glad to say the words, you are holy, Lord. Santo, santo, santo. So, Father, we have been redeemed by him and made a new people by water and the Spirit. Now bring before you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering now his work of redemption and offering to you the sacrifice of thanksgiving, we celebrate his death and resurrection as we await the day of his coming. Lord God of our Father, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, 
open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength, for pardon only and not for renewal. Let the grace of this Holy Communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Risen, Risen Lord, be known, be known to us in the breaking of the bread. bread. <laughs> Accept these prayers and praises, Father, through Jesus Christ, our great high priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, your church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. This is the Lord's Supper, God's feast for all God's people. There is always an abundance here, and there is a place for you. You are invited and encouraged to feast at God's table.
And now, in joyful thanksgiving for all the gifts we have received, let us pray together, saying, God, God of abundance, us, you have fed, fed us with the bread of life and the cup of salvation. You and have you united have us with Christ and one another. And, and you have made us one with all your, your people in heaven and on earth. Now send us forth in the power of your Spirit, that, that we, we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. May God, who in Christ gives us a spring of water, welling up to eternal life, perfect in you the image of his glory and the blessing of God, the holy and undivided Trinity, be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia.
one part. I forgot to scan it. Yeah, she did. She tried to scan it. I had to scan it. And now it all gets to stop scanning after it's all part of the thing. So, you can go out and scan. You're done. Yeah, she was trying to scan it. Well, there's going to be one more track in here. She's not playing anything at the end of the game. She dies. There's no drama. Test. 